This video is brought to you by StormKit.io. With StormKit, you won't have to spend time on building, maintaining, and scaling your front-end infrastructure. Instead, you can focus on providing value to your customers. You can integrate StormKit painlessly into your Git flow, connect it with your headless CMSs, and easily build CI CD pipelines. Make application management more powerful and fun. Visit stormkit.io and get started for free today. CICD. You may have heard this weird little acronym floating around the web, but what the heck is it? Well, today I'm going to show you what it is and why it matters to you as a software developer going into 2021. So CICD is a two-part acronym. The first part stands for continuous integration, and the second part stands for continuous deployment or continuous delivery. We'll talk more about the difference between continuous deployment and continuous delivery in just a moment. But but first, what is CICD? At the end of the day, it's really just about automating your software. CICD automates your builds, it automates your tests, and it automates your deployments. Here I am at one of the holy grail repos for developers. This is the developer roadmap. Now, there are actually a couple of roadmaps here. We go past all this stuff and after the testing section, we have the CICD section, part of the main artery in this backend roadmap. Not a lot of details about it though, just kind of scooches us along to the design and development principles area. But if we go down even further here to the DevOps roadmap, we see the learn infrastructure as a code area. And to the left here, we have a list of CI CD tools. And this is where it starts getting interesting and a little bit fun because these are the modern tools you have at your disposal to start automating stuff, your builds, your tests, and your deployments. There are dozens, if not hundreds of CI CD tools out there. Many of them you may have heard of Jenkins, Travis CI, GitLab, Azure, lots of different ones. Okay, that's nice and all, but how does this automation work? Well, let's say, for example, you are using Jenkins as your CI tool. Here's an example of how the CI flow would work. It all starts with developers pushing code to a repo frequently, a couple times a day, a couple times a week, depending on the tempo of your company, of your organization. And this code could consist of just about anything, patches, updates, new functionalities. And then once it's pushed, a Jenkins build server is gonna test that code. And Jenkins shows you if the code has passed or failed. And if the code fails, you're gonna get a message saying, hey, this code failed. So you'd have to go back and fix it and then push it again so it passes. And then once the code passes, it gets sent to a deployment environment. Again, this whole entire process is automated, saves a lot of hours. But going back to step one here, one of the reasons you'd want to push code frequently, for example, a couple of times a day, is because smaller problems are easier to fix and these broken builds become a priority before building the next feature. So the CICD way of doing things is really focused on this fail fast mentality. Iterate, 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 build, configure, deploy, test, release, build, configure, deploy, test, release. The tempo is really fast. The automations, again, focusing on the three big pieces here, the builds, the tests, and the deployments. This is in really stark contrast to the way some places have done code releases. Like some companies schedule releases every few months, but competition is so high in a lot of these industries, especially like the gaming industry. If you wait months for updates, your competition is going to smoke you. So you got to release those patches, those features immediately. And the CI CD process helps you do that. Let's go back to the last step here of our theoretical CI flow. Again, just as an example using Jenkins, but there's many others. The code passed the test. After the code passes, Jenkins says, yay, you're awesome, so is your code. That's when we shift to our deployment environment. So we're making this transition and that's where continuous delivery or continuous deployment comes in. This is the second part of the CI CD equation. Now in the deployment environment, this example is theoretical, we have a few areas. So we have a staging server, which is gonna go on to QA. And once it passes QA, it's gonna hit its final destination at the production server. And the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment is actually pretty small, but also very significant. Continuous deployment just means that all changes are going through a pipeline and they're automatically deployed into production. On the other other hand, continuous delivery means that developers need to manually approve the deployment. Once it's approved, the pipeline continues its automation. 
So for industries like airlines and healthcare, where it can literally be a matter of life and death, you want some humans in that process checking things over. We don't need planes crashing. We don't need oxygen machines turning off. So certain industries tend to favor continuous delivery over continuous deployment. And so once you fuse the CI part with the CD part, this entire thing is called a deployment pipeline. And a deployment pipeline is a series of validations your code flows through before it's released to production. If you remember this little chart I was showing you earlier, this is actually an example of a basic deployment pipeline. Each one of these modules is a part of the series of validations. And if we check out this example, this is a much more complicated deployment pipeline. This one's also with Jenkins, a little butler dude there. But in this example, part of this pipeline includes a container segment. So now containerization using Docker is a part of the pipeline. Deployment pipelines take on all these different flavors based on the company's needs and the organizational structure. You know, if you have four or five developers in a small startup, you're not going to have the same needs as a FANG level company. So the deployment pipelines are going to look dramatically different. Okay, so now the big question, why would you want to start using this workflow, setting up these deployment pipelines, getting these GitHub actions figured out seems like a lot of work, right? Well, it can be, but implementing CI CD has quite a few benefits. Number one, it reduces production and staging errors, and you're going to avoid merge hell. Number two, it makes bugs easier to find and remove. Number three, you have easy rollback since the changes you're making to the code are small and incremental. Number four, CI CD can increase team productivity. Number five, you get rapid feedback, including automated code analysis and a code health report. Number six, with CI CD, your company can possibly have a competitive advantage since you're pushing so frequently and deploying frequently, you can get feedback from customers faster and stay ahead of that competition. And number seven, with CI CD, there's no more manual FTP deployment. That is the essence of CI CD. If you're new to software development and all this sounded like a bunch of jabberwocky, no worries, you don't have to learn this stuff right now, but it's just something to keep in mind. Have it on your radar because more and more companies are embracing CI CD. More and more developers are expected to know a little bit about it, if not a lot about it, depending on the business, depending if you have a DevOps team or not. And eventually you're going to want to pick up some of these tools and techniques. If you enjoyed this video, learned a little something, please smash the like button or gently press it, your preference. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video.